Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? I, I hope you can. So uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. Okay, it's great pleasure to be talking to you. Uh, as Fernanda said this morning, uh, she, she put it very well. It's so beautiful to see many, so many, I mean, very committed professionals gathered here in a huge attempt to become better professionals, learn, okay, develop, so that they can provide their students with the best, with a great experience, okay? And this is what uh, uh, brings me here this afternoon. So, very nice. We are going to start. Just a second. Okay, here we are. So this is the topic we're going to discuss uh, this afternoon, okay? And, but uh, to get started, I would like you to look at these pictures here, right? And I would like you to tell me what, okay, to guess actually, if you don't know, to, to tell me what they represent, okay? So you can probably see that it's something being developed, okay? If you look at number one and then moving on, moving towards number two, right? So if you said, okay, if you said that this is the pilot plan of Brasilia, you are absolutely right, okay? So in 1957, as it says here, uh, Lucio Costa, right, well, took part in a public contest, and he won this public competition, okay? And his, the, the task that was given for him to, to develop was to, to build, the, to design actually, to design the new Brazilian capital, okay? That was going to move from Rio to, to Brasilia. And obviously he had to start from somewhere, okay? And the, what he did was he drew these two intersecting lines here, right? As you can see in number one, as if he were marking territory, okay? Some people say that, well, it has something to do with, uh, uh, it has a, a religious connotation, but apparently it was just, I mean, you draw, you draw two lines as if you are uh, uh, marking territory, okay? And then obviously it evolved, okay? And the rest is history, right? So Brasilia uh, uh, became a thriving city, right? Full of different buildings, okay? But when you think about it, it all started with that, drawing, okay? It all started with those uh, intersecting lines. And this uh, uh, brings us something really interesting to think about. So whenever we have a task to perform, okay? Whenever we are given a, a task, we have to start from somewhere, right? And uh, we have to, um, and there has to be a beginning, okay? So uh, there we, we have a purpose and there has to be a beginning, right? And in Lucio Costa's case, Right, the purpose was to build the new capital, to develop, to design the new capital of the, the, the country. And he started with these two intersecting lines, right? Uh, in our situation, right, in our context, okay, when we think about our purpose, right, our purpose as teachers, okay, as uh, teachers of English as a foreign language, okay, and with a, a, a contemporary view towards education, our starting point, okay, and our uh, purpose is our commitment, okay, our effort to help students develop their communicative competence, right? And the areas that underpin, all right, the pillars that sustain the, 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 com the communicative competence are these four ones. Okay, so we have the grammatical competence, which has to do with all the, the tools, right? It has to do with structures, vocabulary. It has, uh, uh, another pillar is the strategic competence, which has to do with uh, all the, the, the strategies that you develop, okay, in your, uh, in your um, teaching, in the teaching process, okay, for you to be able to uh, speak the foreign language, to perform uh, in, 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 I mean, in difficult situations, right? And then you have the social linguistic competence. You have to see who you are talking to, right? Uh, and the, the, the context which is involved. And you also have the discourse competence, 
okay? By this course competence, we are talking about language use in social context. We are talking about coherence. We're talking about cohesion, okay? We're talking about genres, right? So this, uh, all these things together, I mean, if we, if we work on all of these things, we will be helping our students develop their uh, communicative competence, okay? An effective way of doing that in our classes, right, is to propose, right, is to uh, uh, provide students with interesting, communicative, purposeful tasks, okay? And this is something that I'm going to talk to you about, okay? We're going to start by defining the term, the concept of, of task, okay? And I'm going to give you two different uh, uh, concepts, okay? I'm going to give you two different definitions, but obviously one has uh, a lot to do with the other. Okay, the first one is referred to as a real world or target task. Okay, by that we are talking about a piece of work undertaken for oneself or for others, freely or for some reward. Okay, the hundred and one things people do in everyday life, at work, at play, and in between. And we have some examples here that Long uh, gives us, right? So if you take a look at the first picture here, going to a, to a shop and buying a pair of shoes, selecting a pair of shoes, talking to the shop assistant, okay? This is a task, right? The, the one in the middle, paint, this, this uh, man here painting this fence, it's also a task, right? And in this case, in this particular case, there is no language production, okay? It's just him performing his task alone. Uh, the other one, the, the, the last one here, you have this, uh, this uh, patient being weighed at a hospital or whatever, okay? This, is, this could be a task in itself, right? Weighing this patient, or this could even be seen as a subtask or of a medical examination that he's going through, okay? So uh, what we have in common, all right, and a lesson that we can uh, reach having a, a look at this idea, at this concept of real world task, is that they have a, a very clear outcome. Okay, so you are buying a pair of shoes, you are painting your fence, and so on. Uh, it can be totally non-technical, right? And, it, it, and the result of it will be non-linguistic. Okay, so we are aiming at the outcome and we are not worried about the language that we are going to use in this process, all right? Another approach to the task, okay, and the one that I'm going to uh, uh, develop here with you, okay, so whenever I talk about task today, I will be referring to this concept that David Noonan uh, brings us, okay, and he says that a piece of, uh, and he refers to, to task uh, in a different way, he talks about a pedagogical task. Okay, and this one has to do with our context, okay, with the context of the classroom dealing with our uh, students. So by pedagogical task, we, he says that it's a piece of classroom work that involves learners in comprehending, manipulating, producing, or interacting in the target language, right? While their attention is focused on mobilizing their grammatical knowledge in order to express meaning and in which the intention is to convey meaning rather than to manipulate form. The task should also have a sense of completeness, being able to stand alone as a communicative act in its own right, with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay, so again, this is the concept, this is the uh, definition of text, the, of task that I'm going to use uh, with you today, all right? So, in other words, Okay, when we think about task, according to uh, Noonan, we have language at work, okay? And in this case, we are talking about all the, the, the work that we carry out in terms of grammar, in terms of vocabulary, okay? All the things that we teach our students that we work on, okay, that we have already seen, but also the, the, the language that emerges in the classroom when we are talking to students, okay? When we are asking them to perform different activities, right? If we want this task, if we're talking about, if you want this task to be a communicative act in its own, okay, uh, there has to be information gap, all right? So we have to communicate and I have a piece of information with the, the other student doesn't. So we are going to, com to communicate and we are going to learn together. We're going to exchange information, right? 
um, if you're not looking at language for the sake of language, grammar for the sake of grammar, okay, the test will have a clear non-linguistic outcome. So what can I, I, I'm learning a different things, I'm, okay, but what can I do with that in, in my life, in real world, okay? There has to be sensitivity to audience, okay? So who am I talking to? Who are the people involved, right? Uh, am I proposing something to a group of students that won't be able to follow that, okay? So the, the, the audience plays a vital role. And I think Nancy was talking about context uh, this morning, and uh, uh, it, it makes, a, I mean, it plays a, a very important role in the, in performing tasks, okay? And also it has to do with coherence and cohesion, okay? So uh, I have to put my message across clearly, right? People have to understand what I'm saying. Uh, people, I, I cannot, I cannot be misinterpreted, okay? So I have to be as clear as possible, right? So uh, if you take all these characteristics of task, okay, you put them all, to, all together, uh, what is it that we are going to generate in our classes, okay, if we ask students to perform a particular task, okay? If we put them all together, we are going to generate this course, okay? So if we, uh, if we give students to, the chance to put all these uh, uh, concepts into practice, right, uh, in a given context, they are going to produce this course. And by taking, as uh, Cook says, by taking this course of fact, fact, factors into account, they can help to develop effective communication, right? So this is what we are talking about. We're talking about communication. We are talking about language being used as a tool, right? We're talking about the public. We're talking about information gap so that we have this course, so that we have, uh, uh, so that we can uh, um, help students communicate and, all, and obviously develop their communicative competence, okay? Exploring a little bit this idea of this course, I would like you to take a look at this, right? Uh, let's imagine that uh, you were working, I mean, the, the objective of your class, right, was to uh, enable your students to invite people to go out, accept, to make invitations, accept, and refuse invitations, right? Uh, and then you propose a, a, an activity, okay, and, the, and students' production by the end of the class is this, okay, they are, they are able to produce this. So you have a dialogue, one person says, how about going to a rock concert on Saturday? And the other says, I'd love to. And then the other goes on, great, see you on Saturday then. And the other one says, to conclude the conversation, see you, right? Uh, if we think about it in terms of language, okay, it's 100% correct. It's very accurate, okay, linguistically speaking. But let's take a look at these questions here, right? And let's see if, uh, in terms of this course, we are helping, we are helping students develop some other aspects, okay? So in this case, we have to consider who are A and B, all right? Who are the people involved in this conversation? Are they friends? Are they partners, okay? People who haven't seen for a long time, okay? So who are they? Obviously, we know that in the classroom, they are two students, okay? But if you think about performing this in the real world, who are these people? Uh, what triggered this conversation, okay? What happened before that motivated A, to invite B to go to a rock concert, okay? And a very important question is, what is the rock, ba rock band, okay? I don't think I would attend any concert, any rock band, okay? I would like to know what rock band the other person is talking about. I also need to know what time, where is the concert going to take place, okay? Who will buy the tickets? Who will pay for the tickets, right? Where are they going to meet? Okay, and when B says, I'd love to, does he or she, does this person sound enthusiastic? Okay, so something for us to think about as well. And also, uh, going to a rock concert in times of pandemic, okay? So, uh, again, the context is very important when we are asking students to perform something, okay? Otherwise, it will sound a little bit far-fetched. Okay, so students talk about something which doesn't make much sense to them, all right? 
So uh, our my question is, uh, after having reflected upon these uh, questions here, when you look at the dialogue again, uh, were we really uh, enabled, are we really providing students with a chance to develop this course, or we are just focusing on uh, uh, producing the, the, the grammar correctly, okay? In other words, being able to use the verb plus ing after how about, using saying I'd love to, okay? Obviously, there is a, 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 an attempt here to come up with something more communicative, okay? But there are other things involved, right? So if I want then to, discuss, to, to promote discourse level fluency, right? If that's what I want to produce in my classes, I have to take some other things into consideration. Okay, so I have to think about the social relationships. Okay, so once more, who are the people involved, right? Uh, and then uh, I have to think about shared knowledge. Okay, and Cook says that this is a very important issue. Okay, when we are proposing, when we are asking students to perform tasks, because we have to consider the, de the degree of ex existing knowledge that students already have. Okay. Because if we un underestimate their existing knowledge, the task will probably be, or the activity will probably become something really dull, very boring, okay? If we overestimate, chances are that it will become incomprehensible, all right? And then we won't have students' engagement in that sense, okay? Uh, so it's, it's, it's something to be considered, right? So we also have to consider the discourse type, right? So am I telling a joke? right? Does it involve telling a joke? Uh, is it a conversation? Is it an anecdote, an argument? Okay, what is it that we are, that I am promoting there in my classroom? Okay, I have to take into consideration as well conversational mechanisms. Okay, uh, am I students ready to take turns? Am I teaching them how to take turns, to initiate, to respond? Uh, am I providing them with functions? Okay, sometimes like chunks for them to perform a few things, okay? Um, and uh, in terms of uh, coherence and cohesion, again, as I mentioned, okay, um, have I provided the, the necessary tools for them to sound coherent, okay? For them to have cohesion in whatever they are saying, right? And obviously all the grammar and lexis, sounds and or letters, okay? And something that I would like to make a point here is that Grammar and lexis, sounds and everything, all this, the, all this language work that we, that we promote in our, class, in our classes, it, 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 I mean, this is something really essential, okay? So this has to continue. For them to perform, they have to have good tools, right? Otherwise, they won't be able to perform properly, okay? Then, uh, if we, okay, uh, give them the right task, Okay, if they have the chance, if they are familiar with the context, okay, if they have shared knowledge, if they have clear roles, right, if students have, the, the, they know what roles they are playing there, if they have the necessary tools, okay, we will have the chance to develop this course, okay, and it will something that will be developed, it will be a, a good language, okay, good material for us to work on, okay, and uh, um, reach lots of nice conclusions and prepare our students for their lives, okay? So if we, going back to that uh, dialogue that I mentioned, okay? So if we only treat, uh, uh, if we only propose, if we only promote this kind of conversation in our classes, okay? Chances are that we are only going to tackle these two last items here, okay? We are not going to put into practice all the other things that are as important, okay? That are really important and will prepare our students for their uh, lives, all right? Now, uh, I'm going to, to, for us to put all these concepts, okay? All these, ab some, sometimes they are a little bit abstract, okay? And for us to put them all into practice, we are going to look at three vocabulary activities, all right? nice vocabulary activities, and we are going to see how we can go from word to sentence level, okay? And then we are going to look at tasks that will take students from 
sentence to discourse level production. Okay, so this is what I invite you to do now. If you look at this first activity that we have here, so this is a typical uh, activity in which um, students have the chance to learn some food and drink items. Okay, and what are the different things that we can do in our classes in order to uh, uh, put these words into practice? Okay, we can do lexical work. We can work on countables and uncountables, right? We can work on pronunciation. We can put these items into, okay, we can build a sentence with these items. We can say, I like apple, I love cake, I don't really like shrimp, okay? You can talk about routine, okay? You can use adverbs of frequency. I eat bread every day. I sometimes drink uh, coffee, right? I can, uh, uh, ask students to talk about it, okay? So I can say, well, what do you have for breakfast? I can ask students to talk about it. What do you have for breakfast? I can promote a conversation there in which Paul and, and, and Jane are going to compare, right? The things that they have for breakfast. I don't know. Paul is going to say, I love orange juice. Jane will say, me too, okay? And you will come up with a variety of different things, a number of different things that you can do with these words, okay? However, if we only work on this, and, and again, this, this uh, working on these items, okay, is extremely important, okay? Uh, having these tools very active, very accurate, is essential for students to be able to communicate properly, okay, if efficiently. But uh, if we simply stop here, chances are that we are just working on language, okay? Uh, obviously, in a, in a communicative way, but I'm working on language. I'm, ask, I'm, I'm providing students with a chance to compare things they like, okay? Things like that. How can I transform then this into a task in which they will have the chance to uh, uh, put all the other items here into practice, okay? Using social relationships, shared knowledge, discourse type, and amongst other things, okay? So a possible suggestion, a possible task is this. Look at the title of the task, improving one's eating habit, okay? Notice that here, I'm not, the, the title of the task is not learning food and drink items, okay? It goes beyond the language. Right? And in this task, what are students going to do? They are going to play roles, right? One student will play the role of a patient. The other student will play the role of a nutritionist, okay? The patient, let's imagine that this patient wants to improve his or her eating habits. He visits a nutritionist. A nutritionist uh, uh, describes what he eats, what he normally eats, okay? The nutritionist can use this uh, food pyramid here as a reference, okay? And the nutritionist, based on the pieces of information provided by the patient, the nutritionist will then be able to tell him or her what he, sh he or she should continue eating, should stop eating, okay? To improve their eating habits, okay? Uh, in order to do that, they will need other tools right? They will need different contexts. They will play roles. They will have to listen to each other, okay? They will have to uh, speak, and they will have to listen to what the other person is saying, because I will have to respond to what the other person said, okay? I have to say things in a clear, accurate way so that my interlocutor uh, can understand what I'm saying, right? And the conclusion here is, uh, maybe they can, we, the, what, what you as a teacher, okay, what you can promote is, uh, okay, do you, you can ask them, do you like the nutritionist's recommendations, okay, and the patient, and the nutritionist will wonder whether the, the patient will follow the recommendations based on their behavior, based on their comments, okay, so we are going, again, we are going beyond language presentation and language practice. Okay, we are thinking about contexts in which language uh, uh, really happens, okay, with people interacting, okay, and learning and exchanging ideas, all right?
So this and, and hopefully, right? If we think about it, uh, if we if, if students really get engaged, and let's imagine that there is one student who really really wants to improve his or her eating habits. Well, maybe follow after this class, he or she will consider a little bit the the things that they have for breakfast or the, or they usually have for lunch. Probably it's it's a lesson they will learn, okay, and they will may, be able to apply those things to their lives. Okay, so this is one example of a task that you can ask, you can use with your students, right? If you notice the level of proficiency in the language here is not very high, right? Uh, students have basically the, they, they have most of the tools here to perform this, but probably you as a teacher will have to provide them with some other things, okay? With some chunks, with some functions for them to perform this properly. Okay? And obviously, after, the, the, after they perform the task, you'll have a lot of material there, okay? raw material to, to be able to work on. Okay? And, and because the lesson was uh, uh, in a clear context and students were engaged, hopefully students were engaged, uh, they will pay attention to that, to that language, okay? to those comments, to those uh, uh, things that the teacher has decided to tackle. Right. Another example that I would like to share with you. Okay, here we have two nice activities. Okay, take a look at this first one. In this first one, we have uh, students. We have some nouns and we have some adjectives. And the idea is for students to come up with the the adjective which corresponds to the noun. Okay, like curiosity becomes curious things of the sort, okay? And we also have some sentences here students can discuss and they can complete using, okay, in which those words are being used, okay? And they can talk about professions, they can talk about creativity, right? So for example, this first one, someone able to reach decisions quickly could be a good, I don't know, a good lawyer, or a good doctor, someone dreaming of become a, a, a teacher needs to be very disciplined, okay? So this is the sort of thing, nice activities that we can uh, um, use in our classes, okay? And with those activities, we'll be able to work on word formation, okay? Okay, we can work on prefixes and suffixes. We can describe, okay, becoming a little bit more abstract, we can describe the 21st century professional Okay, and, and, and um, teaching the students how to say it correctly. So this 21st century professional should be curious, but should have a lot of determination. Okay, we can work on reduced clauses. So a person who is looking for adventure could, okay, and then we, instead of that, you can teach your students to say a person looking for adventure could, okay, so that they sound more fluent, more fluent. Okay, so these, in terms of language, these are the different things that you can work on, obviously in a communicative way, okay? But again, how can I uh, transfer this to a, a real life situation, okay? How can I bring the real world to my class, okay? And then provide my students with the chance to use this language that we have seen here as a tool for me to communicate, for me to uh, put my ideas, my message across in, in a given context, okay? So my uh, uh, suggestion here is something similar to this, okay? Let's imagine that students, so this is the, what you are going to ask your students to do. You're going to tell them that they are members of a team of managers at a specific office, best associates. You, 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 you may decide on the name and you need to hire a new project manager or could be any other professional that you think will be more meaningful to your students, okay? With your partners, discuss the profile of the professional you're looking for, you're searching for, you're looking for, okay? And they're going to discuss, they're going to exchange ideas and they're going to say, okay, they're going to decide the kind of professional they're looking for. And notice that in this case, you could, you can provide them with some uh, uh, sentences for them to complete, okay? And why do you do that? Because you really want to guarantee that they will use the language that you have been working on, okay? You want to raise the bar. You don't want them to resort to the devices with which they are already accustomed. You want them to go further, okay? So, uh, but you, you put this into this context. So you can say, well, 
the professional we are looking for should be, should have this characteristic, since this is a position that, okay, is someone able to, is someone, is a person with good whatever skills, okay? Uh, and then the students will discuss, and while they are discussing, they are not only practicing the, the, the language, okay, but they are also convincing the others, they are listening to what their partners are saying, they are giving ideas, they are using their creativity, they are listening to uh, opinions which are different from theirs, they have to sound coherent when they speak, okay, the ideas have to be cohesive, so you are providing them with a chance again to go further, okay? And they are going to go a lot further than simply coming up with uh, uh, sentence, with grammar sentences, okay? Complete sentences. And uh, another step in this class would be for you to ask students to uh, uh, may pretend they are talking to the HR director who didn't take part in this uh, conversation and summarize the aspects, okay? So they will use, they, they will have to uh, 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 be able to summarize what they talked about, to talk to another person, okay? And th the interesting thing about it is that they will use the language again, the language which has been worked on, but with a different, talking to a different person, okay? With a different purpose. So you are, again, you are going beyond the, 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 the sentences, the correct sentences, okay? And you are, uh, uh, as I said, you're going beyond and you're preparing students for situations, okay? At work or when they travel, okay? A, a variety of different situations in which they have to uh, perform things like this, okay? Uh, communicate, listening to the others, uh, uh, convincing the others, right? Causing a good impression with what you're saying because you want to be listened, you want to be, uh, um, uh, you want people to accept your ideas, right? Um, and you are making believe that you are in a more formal, so you are thinking about a different context, okay? You're really taking students away from the classroom and, 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 and sim simulating a, a, a company or where they work, okay, or a, a place where they, are, they, they will be able to use the, all these things, all these tools that you have uh, proposed here, okay. Another example is this one, okay, another vocabulary activity, right? So here we have three lists. We have a list of adjectives, we have a list of verbs, we have a list of some phrases, Okay, so you have words like audacious, conservative, you have verbs like conform, so to conform to rules, to confront rules, to stand up for your, your opinions. Uh, you have things like, well, I am my own person, so I stand, for what I, I stand up for what I say, I follow the crowd, okay? And you're, you're, you're going to ask students to uh, classify these, these words, right, into accepting things as they are or making changes. This is a nice, uh, 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 this is a nice lexical work when you're talking about the personality, things like that, okay? So they, they will be able to classify the words and then you can use these, this, these words, okay? And you can use this vocabulary to work on collocations, to work on idiomatic expressions, maybe pronunciation, okay? You can create a context, okay, where, where this word can be used. So how would you define John and Steve? And you, one person says, John has a very strong personality. He wants to leave a mark in history. So what kind of person is he? Is he a conservative type of person? A conformist type of person? Okay, not really. Steve is the type of person who will always avoid confrontation, okay? So is this Steve a person who makes waves? So this is something nice for you to, to work with your students. You can uh, personalize it, right? You can ask students to talk about themselves. So how would you describe yourself? Are you the type of person who, who is more conservative, who is more audacious? Okay. You can even propose an interesting discussion and say, well, don't you think we are a mix of both? Okay. Don't you think it's a bit too much? Don't you think we are labeling ourselves too much if we are this thing and not the other thing? at all, right? So these are very interesting things that you can do with your students, okay? Again, 
obviously you are going beyond language, okay? When you ask them to describe themselves, to if they believe, whether they believe we are a mix of both, but chances are that we're still working on language, all right? So again, what kind of real world situation can I propose, can I think of where these words could be used, okay? Because something dangerous that sometimes happens is that, okay, the context is very clear, but they don't necessarily use the new words, okay? Or they, they use the new words in a very simple way, okay? So in this case, how would you describe yourself? Oftentimes a student will say, well, I am audacious and I am not conservative. Okay, but again, we, we can expect a lot more, okay? We can ask students to uh, uh, promote a lot more, produce a lot more than that. Something that I, this is a, a, a real task that I uh, used with, with a group that I had uh, uh, some time ago, okay? And what I asked students to do was to, the, the, what I, the, the, the context that I brought is this, well, I want you to cause a good impression in a job interview right? This is, this is our aim now, okay? So uh, people normally take part in, in job interviews, and obviously we want to cause a good impression. So the, 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 this task will lend, them, it lend itself to that, okay? So let's imagine that you are taking part in a job interview, and you really want to cause a good impression, okay? Because this is likely to be the job of your dreams. The interviewer asks you to talk about your personality, Okay, so amongst other things that happen in a job interview, you, the interviewer will ask you to talk about your personality. But as a preparation for this task, okay, I asked my students to think what they were going to say. And I gave them this, this sort of skeleton for them to prepare. Okay, and what I wanted to avoid here was, I wanted to avoid the, the, um, the, the, the sentence level thing, okay? So I gave them some time to think about it, okay? And I gave them this, this, this skeleton. So the idea is, as far as my personality is concerned, I tend to be like this, okay? I tend to be audacious, I tend to be conservative, I don't know. For example, I usually, right? And then I ask students to come up with an example that would sustain, right? That uh, uh, characteristic that they are using to describe themselves, okay? And then I asked them to think about a, 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 another perspective, okay? So, however, there are moments when I'm like that. So I, can, I, I tend to be conservative, but there are moments when I am more, when I can be a little bit more audacious. For example, two weeks ago, okay, I was involved in the situation and I had to do that, okay? And then having done that, work with a partner, suppose you are in a job interview, and in addition to mentioning your professional experiences, talk about your personality, okay? And then students had a job interview from beginning to end, uh, talking about professional experiences. There was a lot of uh, raw material there to work on, okay? They made a lot of nice mistakes to, uh, to you're, you're going to see Nara tomorrow talking about mistakes as an opportunity, okay, to, to to, to learn, right? So uh, they, they gave me a number of different things to work on. They act, acted out this job interview. They, they, uh, they, there was listening involved, okay? They had to be coherent. They had to be cohesive. It was a more formal situation, okay? So they had to adjust the, the, the register, okay? So the context was clear. They had shared knowledge there, right? And the result, okay, that I would like to share with you was something like this, okay? One of the students, I asked them to, to write something later, and the student came up with something like this. So she said, as far as my personality is concerned, I tend to be a conservative person, and I can easily conform to rules. I used to be an intern in a Chinese company, and I had to accept the procedures determined by the, the headquarters, which are quite different from ours here in Brazil. Two weeks ago, one of my teachers at university gave us two days to hand in a project. I immediately decided to talk to her and mention that the schedule was a bit too tight. She didn't seem to be pleased with what I said, but gave us, gave us some more days to finish the project. Okay, so as you can see, students didn't simply 
keep to the word level thing. They didn't simply keep to the sentence level thing, right? They used this. They were able to talk ab about themselves in a much uh, uh, more, uh, um, I mean, in a much more, in a more general way, okay? And in a much more accurate way, providing much more information. Right, and, and, and the discussion I had with them is that, well, if you want to cause a good impression, right, you have to, to sound good, you have to sound coherent, you have to uh, uh, listen to, the, to what the other person is saying, right? And the reflection I had was, what do, you, what do I like about my, my performance? Okay, so you can propose that to students. What do I like about my performance? What could have been better? Okay, so again, we are going beyond the words, we are going beyond the sentences, we have a, a wider context in which the language is going be, to be used, okay? And again, the language is used, whenever we use language, we're talking to people, we are communicating, we, we, want, to, we want to be part of a group, we want to be accepted, we want to to people to accept our arguments. We want to respect people, okay? So these are the different things that we can bring to our classes when we propose tests, okay? If we, again, if we go beyond the, the language work, right? So going, moving towards the, the end of our conversation here, something that you can do after, after the tests, okay? You can work on post tests, right? You can uh, uh, have reflection on, on performance that can be done individually or in groups, okay? You can focus on form, right? As I said, you can take, I mean, take notes of all those interesting things that students were produced that were not necessarily part of the, the, the language components of that class, okay? And they'll have the chance to practice, to, to, to make them aware of a variety of different things. And because they are engaged, Okay, because the context is clear, chances are that that language work will be more meaningful. Okay, who knows whether they will have the final the chance to finally understand the present perfect. Okay, because this this context is clearer to them, and we can work on repetition of the task. Okay, Thornbury recently gave us gave a, a, a webinar. I think like two two months ago. I'm not really sure in which he talked about the importance of repetition of the task okay and this repetition doesn't have to be uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same task okay but you can bring some variety you can vary the, the task a little bit this this task about the job interview could be easily adapted to a conversation between two friends two people who have just met and they want to cause a good impression to each other and they're talking about their personality okay so students talk to other people and, and they repeat, they, they go back to the language work, but it, with a different context, okay? And probably working the, on different skills, okay? So this is something we can do after uh, having the, the, the test. Well, in a nutshell, the idea that I wanted to bring to you today is that if we aim at this course level fluency, right? Uh, we are raising the bar. Okay, we are maximizing student success. Okay, our uh, and, and something that we have to remember is that our ultim ultimate goal is to provide learners with a chance to develop their communicative competence, right? So going back to the intersecting lines there in, in Brasilia, this is the basis, this is where we start from. Okay, and this is regardless of the module, it can be from A1 to C2, right? We don't have to. Uh, 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 wait until students are in intermediate advanced modules for, the, for us to start worrying about uh, um, this course. This can, be, this can be worked on from the very beginning, right? Uh, language structures are tools. Language is really important, but they are tools with which we can communicate, right? They are not language for the sake of uh, uh, language. And uh, communicative task, as I tried to show here to you is the resource that can generate this course, okay? This, so if we go beyond the language work, if uh, we can generate this course and hopefully students will have a richer experience, okay? We'll learn things that they can take to their lives. And to wrap up, I would like you to take a look at this quote here, which I think is really interesting. I'll give you a 
30 seconds to, to read it. Okay, I think it's very thought provoking, isn't it? And especially this part here, through talk, we establish, maintain, and modify our social identity, okay? Be it in a, a brick and mortar classroom, okay? Or in the virtual environment. This is something, if we put things together, people, if we put people together in the same room, okay? Uh, uh, let's, let's try and, uh, we are always establishing connections, rapport, okay? We're talking about our social identity, right? And the place, uh, and, and the classroom is the place where we can learn with and from each other, all right? So I'd like to, the, oh, this is the bibliography. This is, these are the, the books, the, the main books that I used, okay, while uh, preparing this, this presentation here, right? So they are really worth reading. They bring excellent reflections. And I would like you to thank you very much. And here is my, this is my, uh, email address if you want to get in touch with me. This is a very nice topic that I really like discussing. Okay, so thank you very much.